Our mission here is to train each one of you to become a United States Marine. A Marine is characterized as one who possesses the highest of military virtues. This is Paris Island, South Carolina, training ground for United States Marines. It's here that young men from states east of the Mississippi and women from across the nation will be instilled with self-discipline, confidence, and respect for core and country. For 12 unforgettable weeks, they'll undergo the most intense physical, mental, and emotional demands of their lives. The training will be tough and uncompromising. Nevertheless, they've accepted the Corps' challenge to see if they have what it takes to make it all the way through. Not all who come here will succeed, but for those who can muster the metal to complete this trial by fire, they'll be rewarded with a title that's theirs forever. They will be called Marines. Although the Marines first landed on Paris Island in the mid-1800s, it would be 1891 before a Marine detachment would be permanently stationed here. The Marines served as guards while a large wooden dry dock was under construction. Designated as Marine Barracks U.S. Naval Station, Port Royal, South Carolina in 1886, it would be 1893 before the first barracks was built. In 1911, the Navy redesignated Paris Island as the U.S. Naval Disciplinary Barracks, Port Royal. Marines worked as guards under the command of the Navy. But as the United States drew closer to entering World War I, the country saw a dramatic rise in patriotism. To keep pace with recruitment and the need to standardize the Marine training, the Navy turned Paris Island over to the Corps in 1915. In October of that year, the USS Prairie steamed into the Beaufort River with the first 750 men for the newly established training base. Just two years later, the first Paris Island trained Marines would see battle in the bloody trenches of France. More than 46,000 Marines were trained for duty in World War I. Between the years 1922 to the mid-1930s, recruit training slowed with only about 300 recruits reporting each month. After the United States entered World War II in 1941, the training pace intensified with more than 6,800 new recruits reporting every month. In total, more than 204,000 Marines were trained for service in World War II, with as many as 20,000 being trained at one time. In 1946, Marine Corps leaders reorganized the post at Paris Island and decided to give it a designation that would reflect its primary mission, the training of Marine recruits, thus becoming the world-famous Marine Corps Recruit Depot, Paris Island, South Carolina. Women Marines are also a part of Paris Island's history. The first women Marines arrived in 1943 as reservists, and in 1949, the year following the passing of the Women's Armed Services Integration Act, a separate battalion exclusively for the training of female recruits was permanently established. Today, the primary mission at Paris Island continues to be the producing of highly disciplined, basically trained Marines.
Soon after arriving at the International Airport in Charleston, South Carolina, let's go, hurry up, get down that way. These new recruits learn that life as they have known it is about to change. After a brief orientation and a meal, Hurry up, get on out. they'll board the bus for a 90-minute trip to Paris Island. Listen up, I'll buy you to get some sleep. Because that is going to be your last opportunity for the next couple of days. Is that understood? Yes, sir! Now, you will keep your mouth shut while you're riding on this bus. Is that understood? Yes, sir! Like the generations before them, the journey to becoming Marines begins on these famed yellow footprints. Starting now, you will train as a team. You will live, eat, sleep, and train as a team. The word I is no longer part of your vocabulary. Do you understand? Yes, sir! Let's go. Let's go, sir. Get up right now. Get up right now. Get up right now. Hurry up, no space between your body. No space between your body. Hurry up, let's go. Now, you two right here, you can open my hatch. Open it up right now. Okay, get back. Get back right now. Get back down right now. Get 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 down the transformation has begun. You're gonna call your next kid. That means your mother, father, brother, or sister, or someone else in your bloodline. Not your boyfriend or your girlfriend. You understand me? Yes, sir! In time, these recruits will learn that their success in training will rely greatly on their ability to work together as a cohesive unit. There's no room for individuality. They must look and feel like a team. As a civilian back home, you may have property that is not illegal, but is forbidden here at Paris Island. These items are called contraband. Gradually, all outward signs of their civilian lives are removed. Put it in there then. Let's go. Put it in there. Put your gum in there. Put it in there. By now, they are dazed, confused, and exhausted. It will, in fact, be about 36 hours before they sleep. There's still much to be done on this first day at Paris Island. I got out day. Let's go. Let's go. With the initial uniform issue, the last signs of civilian life are removed. Have you ever called you? You understand me? Yes, sir. Ha! Huh? Yes, sir. Let's tell you, poor boy, drugs, drugs, that's our pizza. You understand that? Yes, sir. Now, what do you want? Chris. What do you want? Quest to use the restroom, please, sir. 29, Seven. 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. The initial processing into the core will take about three to four days. Part of this early introduction and processing includes taking the initial strength test, the first of many physical challenges to be confronted during their basic training.
those found to be sufficiently fit to begin training will now be turned over to their permanent team of drill instructors. Soon, they will learn that what they've experienced so far was merely the calm before the storm. These are just my care. I will train them to the best of my ability. They are the cornerstone in the transformation process, the master craftsmen, molders of marines. My name is Stasson Rossi, and I am your senior drill instructor. For every minute of every day from now until they leave this island, these DIs will work to instill in their recruits the qualities of selflessness, discipline, and confidence. Yes, ma'am! Through their own example, they will demonstrate the highest standards of personal conduct, morality, and professional skills, and they will accept nothing less from their recruits. No recruit who is trained here will ever forget their tougher than nails in-your-face drill instructors. For the next three to five days, the platoons will learn the basics of military life. Yeah! How about writing it legibly so everybody can read it, or whoever you send it to can read it? Sir, yes, sir. This period is known as forming. They will need these days of indoctrination to adjust to the Marine Corps' way of doing things before training begins. Lock them out, lock them out. Let's go. I told you this morning, didn't I? Hey, I said you're going to do that, didn't I? Hey, I knew you would. And what'd you do? Made a face like I'm wrong. Like I'm wrong. Get over there right now. Hey, 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 everybody. Recruit training offers a progressive building block approach that breaks the training down into three distinct phases. During phase one, the training emphasizes strengthening the body through rigorous resistance and endurance exercises. While running helps to build cardiovascular fitness and body tone, events such as the circuit course will help develop the muscle strength and stamina for the rigorous weeks ahead. Close order drill. No recruit escapes Paris Island without undergoing nearly 60 hours of learning to move hands, body, feet, and mind as one. This event is more than just a means for orderly movement from one place to the next. It's a carefully crafted training technique designed to instill discipline, pride, and teamwork. Heels striking, rifles popping, and the melodic cadence of the drill instructor are a familiar daily sound that will ring in the ears of these young recruits for as long as they have a memory of their time on Paris Island. Academic instruction also begins early in the training process. Subjects such as Marine Corps history, customs and courtesies, and battlefield first aid, among many others, will be taught. During phase one, Recruits are also introduced to the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program. It's designed to produce a physical and mental toughness in young warriors that translates to effective engagement in unarmed combat. Taught to fight with principles and discretion, this program fosters the development of the whole Marine, one capable of exercising sound judgment under difficult situations with the confidence that they can triumph over any adversary. The confidence course, where recruits are faced with various obstacles designed to test their conditioning and stamina. 
This is a chance to confront their physical weakness and to face their fears of heights, of water, and of the unknown. Hand-to-hand -hand combat and bayonet fighting techniques are essential survival skills that have always been part of a recruit's basic training. With thick pads on each end, the pugil stick is designed to simulate a rifle with a fixed bayonet. Here, recruits can tap into their inner resolve and aggressiveness. As they learn to fight up close and personal. With the start of phase two, recruits are introduced to combat survival swimming. All recruits will perform a variety of water survival and swimming techniques designed to build confidence in their aquatic abilities. It's a graduation requirement that each recruit meet the minimum established water survival level. What do we have to do? At Weapons and Field Training Battalion, recruits begin intensive rifle training. The Marine Corps Marksmanship Program is a comprehensive three-phase program. I firm pistol grip. I serve. During the first phase, emphasis is placed on firing procedures, firing positions, and safety requirements. Snapping in, Marine terminology for practice, begins with the first day at the rifle range. During firing week, recruits fire live ammunition at targets from set distances of 200, 300, and 500 yards. They know that in order to graduate, they have to qualify with the rifle. Finally, after a week of practice firing, it's qualification day. Near the end of phase two, Recruits are assigned to a week of maintenance duties. It's known as Team Week, and it's a break from the rigors of training for both the recruits and their drill instructors, a chance to recharge the batteries and get ready for the last phase of training. On Sundays, recruits are afforded the opportunity to attend worship services at the recruit chapel. It's the time for spiritual replenishment and reflection. One of the most anticipated events in the day of a recruit is chow time. Carefully planned and balanced meals are essential to keeping recruits well-nourished and energy levels at their peak. Basic warrior training. It's gut check time. There may come a time when a Marine finds that the only way down from a hovering helicopter or steep cliff is by rope. It's called rappelling, and it's one of the most anticipated training events. At the gas chamber, recruits will learn the basics of preparing for a nuclear, biological, or chemical attack. After receiving instructions in assembling, maintaining, and using a gas mask, they must then test it in a gas-filled room to build confidence in equipment reliability. They've trained to act as one precision, pride, and discipline. They're all evident during final drill competition. Every move is watched and graded. The hours of practice have paid off. They've done their best. It's 54 long, grueling, virtually non-stop hours. 
they have only two and a half meals to sustain them, and they'll perform with little sleep. They'll march nearly 40 miles, and they'll be tested to the threshold of their physical, mental, and moral limits. It will be unit before self. Shared hardships, group achievement, and core values are emphasized. This is the crucible. It begins at 0200. Recruits are quickly out of the racks, packed and ready to go. This will be their most difficult task. Stepping off into the early morning darkness, they appear ready for the challenges awaiting them. During the crucible, they'll be challenged with several warrior stations, each named for a Marine Corps hero who epitomized the core values of honor, courage, and commitment. Platoons are broken down into 12 to 16 member teams. In each event, the recruits are presented with situations requiring stamina, ingenuity, and patience. It's now been more than 18 hours since the crucible began. In the coming hours, recruits will continue to push themselves. They've solved a multitude of problems and overcome numerous physical challenges, but this was only day one. Day two also begins in the early morning darkness. With only about four hours of sleep, the recruits must now confront hunger and exhaustion. Yeah, go, go, go. Okay, go, go. Uh, Nerves are frayed. You gotta understand something. You ain't got all day. Descent is emerging. There are signs of turmoil in the ranks. This is just the test the Marine Corps leaders had hoped for. Start over. They must somehow regroup, work through it. Stop! Come up! It's easy! Come down! They now have to call upon all their reserves of strength and mental toughness. They sense that the end of this trial by fire is near. Teamwork, camaraderie, and pride have gotten them this far, but they must continue to push and encourage each other. The toughest part is behind them now. Working through the aches, pains, and blisters, there's nothing that can stop these young warriors. In just nine more miles, they'll be back where they started this event a long two and a half days ago. They chant with pride and a sense of accomplishment. Following this culminating event of the Crucible, the tired and hungry but exhilarated recruits are rewarded with a well-deserved warrior's feast. During the 12th and final week of training, the recruits must receive one last seal of approval during the battalion commander's inspection. It's the eve of graduation and time for the five-mile motivation run. Led by those who trained them, 
These recruits now exude a new confidence and bearing. They know that they're less than a day away from being awarded the title of Marine. The struggles and hardships of recruit training are behind them now. Through it all, these young men and women learned they were capable of much more than they ever thought possible. Hard work, perseverance, and boldness of spirit and willpower got them to this point. They have successfully met the Corps' challenge and are now ready to stand alongside the generations of Marines who preceded them. As their drill instructor hands them their Eagle Globe and Anchor, they sense a change, a feeling only those who have earned the title could ever understand. Their proudest moment is now, frozen in time. It's the moment when they will be called, for the first time, Marine. Finally, the reunion they've waited for. They're greeted by families and friends they haven't seen since training began. It's family day. Paris Island. It has been called the cradle of the Corps. Marines are made here, and today, the newest crop of fighting leathernecks will be unveiled. It's graduation day. <laughs> 